Hello, my name is Mary, and I'm 42 years old. I've been married to my husband, Charles, for a decade. We initially worked together, but now we are employed at different branches of our company. Charles is known for his responsible attitude at work and is quite popular among his colleagues. He's confident and ambitious, always striving to present a strong image. In contrast, I tend to be quieter and less conspicuous, which made it all the more surprising when Charles, with his dynamic personality, took an interest in me. After three years of dating, he proposed to me with a lavish bouquet of roses, making me feel deeply cherished. I accepted without hesitation, eagerly anticipating our life together. However, Charles soon revealed a twist in our plans. He wanted us to live with his parents. I was hesitant about this arrangement, but he convinced me, assuring me that his parents were welcoming and excited about our joint living situation. Reluctantly, I agreed. For the past eight years, I've resided with my in-laws in what was once solely my husband's home, an arrangement I hadn't anticipated when I imagined married life. My days begin early, often with my mother-in-law critiquing minor things, such as how I clean the front door. Despite my efforts to prepare breakfast for the whole family, her incessant complaints persist. As she departs for work, leaving me to hurriedly rectify any issues, I feel reduced to mere house help. This routine involves waking up at 6 o'clock a.m. to manage household chores and cooking, despite my mother-in-law being at home all day and not contributing. After a long day at my job, I return home to prepare dinner. By bedtime, I'm so exhausted that I fall asleep immediately. This relentless cycle leaves me constantly worn out and stressed, while my mother-in-law relaxes in the living room, enjoying the breakfast I made. She reminds me to maintain cleanliness so that the neighbors will hold a good opinion of us. Despite the ongoing challenges and the lack of support from my husband in these domestic conflicts, this repetitive cycle seems unending. My father-in-law tends to ignore the mistreatment I face, burying himself in his newspaper, seemingly oblivious to the tension. Ever since I moved in with my husband's family, the relentless stress has taken a severe toll on me. I've lost significant weight, and even my menstrual cycle has ceased, making it impossible for us to conceive. Despite my mother-in-law being a substantial source of this stress, I'm the one who gets blamed for our inability to have children. There was a time when I took pride in my appearance and personal care, but now I hardly recognize the woman looking back at me in the mirror. The constant criticism from my mother-in-law and my dramatically changed appearance has plunged me into a deep depression. I've grown so accustomed to yielding to her demands that I've become completely submissive, feeling numb and lacking the energy to even think about leaving. The situation grew even more painful when I received devastating news. My father had passed away unexpectedly in an accident. It had been ages since I last visited my family home, mainly because my husband and mother-in-law would express their displeasure whenever I mentioned wanting to go. Filled with regret for not spending more time with him, I knew I needed to attend his funeral. When I told my husband and mother-in-law that I needed to go to my father's funeral, they coldly responded before I could even finish, saying, we're not going. Let your family handle it. Their heartless reaction left me trembling with anger and grief. Many people attended my father's funeral. He was self-employed and had many connections, and the air was filled with tears, showing just how beloved he was. My mother, whom I hadn't seen in a long while, was shocked by my frail appearance. Mary, what happened? You look so thin, she exclaimed with worry. Are you sick? Seeing how worn out I looked, she burst into tears, terrified at the thought of losing another loved one. No, Mom, I'm not sick, I reassured her, trying to calm her fears. I tried to offer comfort, taking a moment to myself in the waiting room. 
Her concern made me reflect on my recent years and how my interactions with my husband and mother-in-law lacked any semblance of comfort or support, even during such a critical time as my father's death. This fueled my anger further, and I decided to confide in my mother about my challenges at home. Living with my in-laws has been more challenging than I ever anticipated, particularly because of the constant bullying I endure from my mother-in-law. It's wearing me down. During a candid conversation, I shared these feelings with my mother, who looked at me with deep concern. I'm glad you're not physically ill, but this doesn't make me feel any better. Is this why you haven't been visiting? She asked. I nodded, confirming her suspicion, which only seemed to deepen her worry. She handed me a piece of paper, urging, take a look at this, then think carefully about your next steps. It was my father's will. He had always been thorough and cautious, having prepared it just in case. As I read through the document, I stumbled upon a line that made my heart skip a beat. It mentioned an inheritance of $5 million. The shock of such a large sum momentarily lifted my spirits, sparking a flicker of hope. With this money, I could build my own house and leave my in-law's place. I thought to myself, the idea filling me with a sudden rush of excitement and relief. Back at the in-law's house, I continued with my usual household chores, but now with plans brewing in my mind. I found the house got messier on days when I was preoccupied with my dreams of independence. No one else seemed inclined to pick up the slack. As I went about my tasks, thoughts of the inherited $5 million were a constant distraction. Despite the tense atmosphere at home, my desire to stay with my husband, Charles, remained strong. So one evening after his parents had retired for the night, and it was just the two of us, I decided it was time for an open conversation. There's something I need to talk about, I began, breaking the silence. Charles looked at me, an expectant expression on his face. It's about my father. I've come into an inheritance, I disclosed. Oh, how much? Charles asked, a note of curiosity in his voice. It's five million dollars, I revealed. Charles' eyes widened, a mixture of surprise and excitement evident on his face. He left you that much? That's incredibly generous. He commented, then paused, his tone shifting as he added, we should discuss how we might use this money. I felt a surge of relief that Charles seemed receptive, and I was ready to broach the main issue at hand. This was the moment I had been waiting for to discuss our future and the possibility of moving out from under the oppressive shadow of my in-laws. But before I could voice my ideas about using the inheritance to build our own home, Charles interjected with a shocking suggestion. We need to transfer that money to my mom's bank account right away, he declared. I was stunned, thinking he must be joking. Why would we do that? The inheritance is mine, so it wouldn't be right to give it to your mom. I responded with a laugh, hoping he was just teasing. Charles's reaction was immediate and fierce as he slammed his hand on the table. What are you talking about? A wife's money belongs to her mother-in-law, he exclaimed. His words were so outlandish that I struggled to believe he was serious. His stern expression said to chill through me. I'm sorry, but I don't understand, I replied, bewildered. All I wanted was to suggest that we build a house for ourselves but Charles wouldn't let me speak further. He kept insisting that my inheritance should be claimed for his mother. That night, I was too shocked to sleep. The next morning, while I was making breakfast, Charles and my mother-in-law confronted me with angry expressions. Mary, I heard about it. You inherited five million dollars, and you said you won't give it to me. Who do you think you are? My mother-in-law demanded, her voice filled with indignation. Already aware of the inheritance through Charles, my mother-in-law was adamant. Stop arguing and transfer it to my parents' account now. 
A daughter-in-law's money is our money, she asserted. Their intent to seize the inheritance at any cost was unmistakable, and no matter how much I objected, they continued to pressure me. Eventually, I fell silent. That's when Charles produced a piece of paper. You're getting carried away because you've come into some money. I'm the one who's been supporting you. If you don't change your attitude, it's divorce, he threatened. The paper he held was a divorce form already signed by him. As I took the divorce form from Charles, a rush of memories overwhelmed me. I realized that throughout our marriage, I had never really received any financial support from him or his family. I had been contributing equally to our living expenses, and yet all the household chores fell squarely on my shoulders, despite my tireless efforts. They had consistently treated me poorly. Now they were even trying to claim my father's money. The pressure to relinquish my father's inheritance if I stayed was immense but being told to leave suddenly seemed like a chance for a new beginning. Holding the divorce papers, I realized I had the power to shape my future. I vowed never to surrender my father's legacy and made up my mind. After a long day at work, I returned to my parents' house. I'm home, I called out. Welcome back, my mother greeted me with a warm smile, despite my exhaustion. A home-cooked meal awaited me on the table. It had been ages since I had enjoyed a meal prepared by someone else. With each bite of the delicious food, tears of gratitude welled up in my eyes. Did you tell your husband about the inheritance? My mother inquired. Yes, and it caused quite a stir. I replied, recounting the demands my husband and mother-in-law had made. My mother listened speechless at the shocking revelation. The inheritance belongs to you and you alone should decide your future. She comforted me gently as I cried. After being cared for at my parents' home for a week, I decided it was time to return to my in-law's house armed with a renewed sense of strength. Well, I'm heading back now. Take care, I said confidently, no longer afraid to face the challenges there. As soon as I returned, my husband and mother-in-law confronted me with stern expressions and crossed arms. Have you reflected on your behavior? They demanded. Yes, I apologize. Please allow me to stay in this house again. I offered my apology more strategic than sincere. My mother-in-law's face lit up with anticipation. Well then, hand over the inheritance quickly, she demanded. The inheritance process is taking longer than expected. I haven't received it yet. It's a complex procedure, so it might take another seven months or so. I explained, buying myself some time. Seven months? That long? My mother-in-law's disappointment was evident. Well, fine, she reluctantly accepted. Both my mother-in-law and husband appeared satisfied, thinking their plan was still on track. Unaware of my resolve to chart my own course, Despite their demands, I didn't hand over the inheritance. However, they continued to nag me about spending a week at my parents' house. You're neglecting your duties as a wife. The house is a mess. Clean it up quickly, they insisted. The state of disarray and unhygienic conditions at my in-law's house after just a week was almost impressive. Previously, such chaos would have deeply upset me but now it didn't bother me in the slightest. I simply carried out my mother-in-law's commands without letting it affect me emotionally. It's my birthday, so I'll be leaving. Make sure to keep the house clean, my mother-in-law announced as she always went on a trip to celebrate. Naturally, I wasn't invited. By the way, have you received the inheritance yet? It's supposed to come in today, my husband inquired almost too conveniently hinting that the $5 million could be a splendid birthday present for his mom. Don't forget to transfer it to mom's account before we get back, my mother-in-law added. The timing of her birthday, coinciding with the supposed arrival of the inheritance, felt too perfect. As they left, I maintained a pleasant facade, 
bidding them a cheerful take care. Once they were out of sight, I sprang into action, ready to execute the plan I had been formulating for so long. They were in for a surprise upon their return, but by then I wouldn't have to concern myself with their reactions. Wow, this is incredible, I exclaimed as I moved my things into my new home. Thanks to my father's inheritance, I was able to build this house. I felt an overwhelming sense of happiness and relief, finally living in a beautiful place that I could call my own, free from the oppressive atmosphere of my in-law's house. I decided to share my new home with my mother, who lives in my hometown. The sense of relief knowing I no longer had to deal with my in-laws was profound. Settling into the plush sofa and in my new living room, I felt a contentment I hadn't experienced in years. To celebrate this new chapter, my mother and I decided to indulge in a day of luxury. We even hired a chef to cook for us, making the day truly special. The next evening, my phone rang. It was my husband, and his voice was thick with frustration. What the hell is going on? He demanded, clearly baffled by the empty house he had returned to. I won't be coming back there. Goodbye, I stated firmly, hoping to end the conversation without further ado. But then my mother-in-law's angry voice burst through the phone. What are you doing? Where are you now? She demanded. You asked me to clean the house, so I packed up my belongings. I replied calmly maintaining my composure despite her agitation. That's not a funny joke. Plus, you didn't transfer the inheritance. How many times do I have to tell you that my daughter-in-law's money is mine? She shouted. Huh, I'm single, you know, I retorted, my patience wearing thin. Suddenly, my yelling mother-in-law fell silent. Single? She echoed, confused. Well, I'm divorced. I was handed a divorce paper, so I submitted it. I'm a stranger to you now. Goodbye, I said and ended the call abruptly. I couldn't help but chuckle, imagining the stunned expression on my mother-in-law's face. The freedom from that oppressive family brought a huge sense of relief. In the days that followed, I received numerous calls from my ex-husband. Whenever I had some free time, I deliberately answered the phone and calmly ignored the insults hurled by my ex-husband and ex-mother-in-law. I made sure to record all these calls. With the recordings in hand, I decided to seek advice from the police. Harassment from an ex-husband is unfortunately common, and I was determined to take every precaution to ensure my safety and peace of mind in my new life. Addressing harassment early is crucial to prevent it from escalating. Thankfully, when I approached the police with my concerns, they acted promptly and visited my ex-husband's family. For my ex-in-laws, who were deeply concerned with maintaining a pristine public image, just the sight of police at their doorstep was a significant blow. Additionally, a colleague of my ex-husband, who lived nearby, saw the police visit. Given my ex-husband's high-profile status in the company, word of this incident spread quickly. Colleagues who harbored resentment towards him didn't miss the opportunity to fuel the rumor mill, and soon enough, negative gossip began circulating about him. Eventually, the rumors reached my department. Did you hear about the police visit? My colleagues whispered among themselves. I'm divorced now, so I'm not really in the loop. I responded loudly enough for others to hear. The gossip-loving employees eagerly spread the news further. It didn't take long for the rumor to make its way to my ex-husband's boss. You've been the subject of a lot of negative rumors, haven't you? His boss remarked during a tense meeting. My ex-husband, caught off guard, could only protest. What are you talking about? I can't tolerate men who don't appreciate their wives, his boss continued. Furthermore, with these damaging rumors circulating, it could tarnish our company's reputation. Therefore, I've decided to transfer you. The transfer order issued to my ex-husband was severe, 
a relocation to a branch office in the least productive region, likened by some to a deserted island. Do you understand what this means? His boss added, Everything my ex-husband had worked for up to that point crumbled. There was no hope of advancement in the foreseeable future. With no option to decline, he had to relocate to this remote area. As for my ex-mother-in-law, she was likely taken aback by her son's suddenly tarnished reputation and the dramatic changes that followed. Following the upheaval, my ex-mother-in-law struggled to cope with the new reality that she could no longer live with her son. This isolation led her to become withdrawn, and over time, she developed symptoms of depression. Concerns about her mental health grew as she began exhibiting behaviors typical of dementia, often causing disturbances at home. My ex-father-in-law found himself in a challenging position, now the primary caregiver for his significantly changed wife. Despite the strained relations, he often lamented, even without blood ties, a daughter-in-law is still a valuable member of the family. The difficulties faced by my former in-laws seemed almost like a form of caricature retribution for the way they had treated me. Meanwhile, my life took a happier turn. Now living with my mother, we've taken up gardening in our spacious backyard. This new hobby has brought me immense joy and satisfaction, something I might never have discovered had I remained in that oppressive household. Gardening has not only revitalized my spirit, but also improved my physical health, which had previously deteriorated under the stress of living with my in-laws. I am grateful every day that I made the decision to sever ties with them and have since found true happiness and peace in my new life with my mother.